Mike Rice. Yes. Welcome to the studio. Thanks, lad. Dude, thanks for being a guest on the show. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, this is the first time we've ever met. That's right. Yeah. We're going to test that theory about do comedians really get on just because they do comedy. Yeah. Yeah. This could be, it could be a great um, case study as to why that's bullshit, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe you end up fucking hating me after 10 seconds. Yeah. 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 How's the tour going? Uh, the tour is going grand. You know, it's like the on the show side of things. It's great. All the the rooms are full. Um, do you know what it is? It's it's um it's a thing I have to remind myself sometimes to be uh, grateful for what's happening. You know, because I'm I, I'm doing full rooms every night of like a hundred people more getting to run forty five minutes, um, which isn't uh, normal. You know, um, but then sometimes you can just get bogged down in the the misery of the the travel mm. and uh and you know like you're in such close quarters like me and victor are uh traveling together all the time so we're just you know on top of each other um so you know like you do like end up kind of like you know there are moments where you just want to to kill i want to kill him yeah you know do you share a room yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah because the whole thing is like you know we're, we're trying to to make money yep so you're kind of doing this like uh fucking uh can i curse on this please do yeah cunt um i just you. get that out of there um that wasn't directed at you but you know you, so <laughs> we're doing this um this intense period of time and you want to just like it's like if you were in australia you know they go down the mines they do a thing called a suicide swing which is where guys just go working seven days a week down the mines 14 hours a day and then they just fucking come out uh, at the end of that, and they just have a shitload of money. Um, now, this is sounding like I'm some sort of, you know, uh, foot to the floor capitalist here. But uh, but anyway, my point is, uh, with the shows, we're trying to keep fucking costs down. Yep. You know, you know, live like uh, you know paupers. Go from city to city. Take the money out of Scandinavia. Just luchy bastards. Bring it back <laughs> to our house and, you know, be able to afford to do cocaine for a month. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's living the dream, bro. Yeah, that's the that's the kind of idea. So the tours the tour is is going well. But I just have a I think I have a natural as I think maybe many comedians do, I have a natural propensity to focus on negatives of things so i'm still complaining a lot well that's where you find a lot of the humor yeah right that's where yeah. you're like oh this is something that i fucking annoys me uh what, what am i looking at here that's right yeah yeah shit and i spoke to victor about this and like he said that the the, the, the tour is going really well and like you know is it a financial success from your side yes yeah well see the thing is like victor's kind of like my handler my sugar daddy uh you know I, I was going to say lover there, but he won't put out. Mm. But um, very prudish. Prude, individual. Yeah. yeah, he's a prudish. But it's Romanian Christian orthodoxy, and they're just... You it's know ambitious what I mean? there. He's like, I'm not in the mood. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Anyway, because <laughs> he should be subservient to people who live further west. But anyway, I'm not going to even go into that. But uh, so, uh, so I'll know at the end. That's basically how it works with me and him, is like... Oh, he's gonna like go through the costs, and that's so he's, right. Oh, he's he's the he's the tour manager, in yeah. a way. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. So he's he, was it him that set everything up, and then he said, he, "Hey, Mike, let's go." That's right. Now it's been in the pipeline for a while, mm. right? So he tells me, "Right, these dates we're gonna we're, we're planning on doing this tour in Scandinavia. Are you free from these dates?" And then he l just logs it up with shows, whether it's two shows a night, one show per night. Um, he takes care of the accommodation, the flights, everything like that. Um, while we're on tour, he just has like basically a fucking company card. Yeah, we work off of that uh, for food and prostitutes that and whatever else we <laughs> end up getting. Um, that's nice for you though, huh? That's nice for you. Like you, you don't need to think about shit. You just got to focus on the comedy and. Yeah, well, yeah. There, there is, there is that element. It is very nice for me. It is great, and I am. It, it suits my nature. I'm quite a, like kind of uh, I I I've, uh, it suits me to be kind of a dependent yeah. type of character. Like if I spent like a day with you, even I'd probably just start following you around and I'd order whatever you order in restaurants. I've kind of like this childlike quality to me. But Victor does like will get on my ass about like you know because part of the promotion when we're going around is like we join every group in every city. So like yeah, I saw fucking, you guys in Aussies in Oslo. Yeah, in Aussies in Oslo. Now I don't. 
I, I don't want to get myself in trouble here, but I am not a native of Australia. And I can tell. So I entered that group under false pretenses. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> Are you in Australia living in Oslo? Yes, yes I am. You can, I, you, years. you can identify as an Australian. I fucking can, mate. <laughs> Just talk like that. That's not, fucking racist. That's not bad. That's great. Yeah, well, there's so uh, many Irish people living in, in Australia anyway. I mean, there's fucking heaps that you can't. Well, that's right. Yeah, Australia is kind of um, uh, the little escape has been historically a great escape for Irish people. It suits Irish people. Australia, you know, you can just do dogged shit work that we love to do. Mm. Go down to mines, misery. A lot of construction work. A lot of construction. Smashing down brick walls. Oh, smashing uh, down brick walls. The, the standard of women is much higher, you know. And people, the thing is, in Ireland, it's no good to be Irish. I'd go as far as to say it's of no advantage at all being Irish. Um, whereas outside of Ireland... Um, that's just, what, that's what happens. Just, yeah, 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 people yeah. like us because of our, you know, because like we, we sound stupid and, um, you know, we've this little kind of like fucking lyrical accent and so we punch way above our weight mm. with uh, women and stuff. See, the thing is, in Norway, um, everyone's hot as is, whereas in Ireland, everyone kind of is like, is that a person or is it a farm animal? A lot of the time, <laughs> no. And I'm not trying to be down <laughs> on my own people, but no, no. we are quite inbred and. We we were voted the ugliest country in Europe. We were, but um, <laughs> by other European countries, they all said, "Listen, they look like shit." Um, now, luckily, <laughs> as we know, men um, are not as dependent on looks as women. So, because we're so ugly, uh, evolutionary wise, we've had to develop good personalities, become good storytellers. That also uh, gets born out of like um, kind of oppression and being poor and stuff. People become entertaining because they've nothing else to entertain themselves except themselves. This is a, a theory I have anyway. But so um, that's why so that's why you think Irish people are so they have such good banter and they have such good personalities because they're hideous. Um, and oppression and a few other things that you I, mentioned. Yeah, I think a lot of it is like, well, if you didn't <laughs> tell a good story, you just look like a foot. You yeah. know, like that's all you've got going for you. You look like a foot that's been infected. And so, yeah, we, we, we need, we have needed to become, to add value to ourselves by being uh, entertaining and fun. But I also think that that came from the fact that you know, we were colonized by the English um, for 800 years. Uh, we were occupied by the English and Irish Catholics were uh, seen as basically less than human, weren't allowed to vote, weren't allowed to own large pieces of land, blah, blah, blah. So we had nothing. The weather is miserable. We're poor. It's shit. So at that point, the only way, because you're not getting any joy in any material sense, because everything in your surrounding is externally is just utter dog shit. So the only way that you can kind of find joy and happiness is by giving it to each other. So it's it's very like you you even notice now as you're traveling around different places in Europe, um, you know, people are not as friendly in Ireland. If you're not friendly and you're not like good crack, crack is the word we have for it, and crack kind of just means like good fun or you're up for a laugh or this kind of thing. If you're not good cracker, you're not friendly. It's almost immoral, mm. you know? It's almost like if you if you meet someone and they're just like this kind of like, you know, reserved and just kind of cold exterior, like we just think you're a cunt. Yeah, you're you not know? fun to hang out with. You're not fun to hang out with and you're not adding anything. No, and, you're just and, there. Oxy you're, oxygen thief. You're an oxygen thief. Yeah, they're the yeah, worst. Yeah, and yeah. you should, in, inside of us, we re part of us do does think you should be charged with some sort of social offense. Like, yeah. We would love that if, if, if you went to jail just for being, like shit crack is what we call it. Shit crack is just if you're, it's not, you don't even have to be funny necessarily, but it's just to be open. Yeah. To having a bit of fun. Just add some value. And fucking smile, you cunt. <laughs> smile, you shithead. Yeah. Stop sucking joy out of people. Yeah. You yeah. non-contributing fuck. But I think that <laughs> that attitude is born out of is born out of um uh, poverty and shit situations whereby it's just it's important that we give each other that you know yeah 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 um, it's, and a, it's a gift it's like an energetic absolute. gift i'm here i'm going to make sure that you have a good time we're going to have a good vibe between us that's just, right i don't have anything else yes. i don't have no potatoes i nothing <laughs> so i'm just going to like provide you <laughs> with some uh, with a good experience 
Yeah. Dude, I, I'm going to take these fucking things off. Uh, yeah. Just, just for me. You, you, you do whatever you want. No, man. I'm a mirror. I'm going to do what you do. Yeah. So. Ju just the like that crackling was like doing my head in. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. You know, my granddad's Irish. Wow. Yeah. I actually have an Irish passport. It's fucking nice. Yeah, dude. That's how I got into Europe. That's yeah. how I could be in Norway. Just fucking flash that thing. Get in. No problem. That's yeah. excellent. So where are you from originally? I'm from Sydney. Oh, you're from Sydney? Yeah, I'm from Sydney. Ah, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Because I, I, I could... Do you know what's funny? I, I could um, sense like the accent is kind of Aussie, but I've met Norwegian people here who just... They assume different mm. accents. Like so there's a Norwegian person with an English accent with this accent. And I'm like, oh, you're born in England. They're like, no, just Norway. But they just kind of pick... Dude, Sometimes, I, which one they want. I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, speak English I've run into people who are Norwegian, and they sound more Australian than me. And I, I probably lost my accent, but like they sound like they're fucking like Steve Owen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like really fucking Aussie, mate. Yeah, nice to meet you. G'day, yeah. where did you live, eh? Fucking right, mate. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good Australian uh, accent. Well, I see. I was in Perth um, for two years, for two six-week periods doing uh, comedy festivals over there. Perfect. And um, they've got great, these great festivals over there, and they're like really good money and uh, different things. But I remember uh, myself and my friend, uh, John, We so there's this old guy, his name was Colin Slattery in Perth, and he just let us stay in his house because he's of Irish descent. Like people, it's this great thing, and I, I, I assume it travels with other nationalities, but like, like Irish uh, diaspora, like people of Irish descent that live abroad are just so unbelievably kind mm. to Irish people that are visiting. So he's all, just fucking stay in my fucking house, mate. <laughs> he's all, you just stay here. We're like, well, we'll pay you. He's all, no fucking why, mate. Yeah, You're good. fucking one of us. Like there was one point he was like, you guys are my sons. You guys, and we're like, well, take it easy. There now, <laughs> yeah, that's a bit much, You know, mate. you've Relax. gone a bit much, but yeah, um, yeah. listen, I'll blow you either way. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I remember the first, like, <laughs> the first time I met him, because yeah. you know there is, like, I think Perth particularly is seen in Australia, you can tell me what you think, but as more of a regressive part of Australia, as in, like, that... It's a bit more backwards. A bit more uh, backwards and, yeah. and whatever, and I, I could say probably in my experience that was... Uh, true, but um, like even Colin now, he's very um, very like masculine, like back and back and nice one, back and my back, <laughs> women kitchen sandwich done, right? Uh, you know what I mean, yeah, like that yeah, kind I of thing. The type. And uh, when me and uh, my friend John first met him, we'd never met him before, and uh, we went over there for a like a barbecue, and um, we arrived over, and yes, guys, come in, you fucking cunts, right? Just cause us cunts after thirty seconds. Now. Uh, luckily, we're Irish, so we like that, you know. We are like, be our new father, you know. And uh, so next thing he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, what you want from the barbecue, you can't. And uh, <laughs> I, and I understand, even as I'm doing this Australian accent, doing Australian, I'm sure this is annoying. But, um, uh, but, keep going. The, but anyway, he goes, what you want from the barbecue, you can't. And my friend John is uh, he's a pescatarian. He only eats fish and vegetables, right? So he says, no. He says, uh, Colin, I actually, I don't eat meat. I only fi eat fish and vegetables. And I swear to God. <laughs> It would have been better if he had taken a shit in that man's child's mouth. Like, that's the look the guy's face. He just went, fucking what? <laughs> and then John goes, I, I only eat fish and vegetables. He looked him straight in the eye and he just goes, you fucking fish fucker. Right? <laughs> Call him a fish fucker. Because <laughs> yeah. in his, like, warped Aussie mind... He thinks if you don't eat meat, you must be like romancing trout or something, right? So uh, my friend John's a kind of shy guy. So he's like, no, no. He's trying to defend himself. He's like, no, I've never fucked with it. He's like, John, I don't think he means you're actually shagging salmon, you know? And then the guy goes, that is what I fucking mean, right? He's like, he's up to his nuts and fish catch the fucker. <laughs> he's out of his mind. Then he turned to me. He's like, he, he's like, what's your story, Mike? I was like, Colin, I've never even taken a fish for a cup of coffee, you know? Uh, he's like, I fucking like you, Mike. I was like, good, yeah. Um, but there is that like uh, Especially you know. out in Perth It's very masculine With all the mines And people are like Fucking d Digging diamonds With big fucking tractors And shit it, like that Do you know that, what I mean Like Oh yeah It's yeah, the yeah. wild west still Like Australia And in Sydney And Melbourne We like try tend to think of ourselves As a little bit more cultured A little bit more refined You know yeah. We'll spend fucking 20 bucks on a cup of coffee That's right But in Perth You're like Nah those cunts You know They're still doing it Like they did 100 years ago Well yeah There is that There's that agricultural element to people and i don't know why that is that there there is something maybe it's because when you're spending a lot of time outside and you're lifting shit or you're you know you're in a, an industry maybe that's dominated by men so mm. it's just other men around that that breeds a certain kind of testosterone filled 
um, outlook. Yeah, definitely, right? Um, I mean, you, you'd get that more than sitting like inside with a bunch of designers working on Photoshop. Right, exactly. Yeah, there, there, yeah. there is, yeah, that's true. There yeah. is something about that. And even that you're moving your body like chemically. Did, um, it, did it, did it, did it? infect you did you start like all of a sudden like adapting like what was his name colin colin the, he must have left some kind of impression like oh yeah no i hate aborigines now i'll be honest with you um <laughs> just every living moment of my life i'm not even there and i'm just like what the fuck are the abos up to um <laughs> no uh you know i'm i'm interested in, in in that way i think i am quite um like i view myself uh, as a, a good person and most of my um, views, if not all of them, are just like liberal and love and everyone and everything. But I can become infected by charismatic energy, you know. Like I think everybody can. Yeah, like yeah. If, if someone gives a point off, like even some of these fucking, you know, guys that are big online, like uh, you know, like an Andrew Tate or a Jordan Peterson. If I look at one of their videos and like immediately, after, like just somewhere in me, they will have captured me. Yeah, you women shouldn't be allowed to drink soup or whatever, you know, like. Uh, I, I'm easily caught up yeah. in things, but then as I go away and like you know, think about me quite, it's like, all right, that is ridiculous. But you know, like I know back in like in you know in Nazi Germany, like if I was there, no doubt, absolutely, I would have been a Nazi. I mean, I'm a Nazi now, and it's not even cool. So, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, so back yeah, then, yeah. I would have been really you fucking all in, bro. Let's go. Diesel. Yeah, give me the uniform. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have that. That's just part of my. Uh, personality is like that's something i have to watch i don't know you like that like um, I, I i get absorbed into the culture around me but yes. i try to apply a critical perspective on everything yeah from my own experience but i think that's only something that i've developed better and better and better as i've gotten older yeah. you know you start seeing enough stuff you go oh, that's bullshit did they really have weapons of mass destruction everybody thought they did i fell for it no they didn't right and then with the whole COVID thing and all that kind of stuff. What's like, the story? What's what do you think about the COVID thing? Are you skeptical? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. But yeah. but but to what degree or to what or who do you think do you think it's a mass manipulation? What do you think is definitely it's a mass manipulation. Okay. Yeah. So to, to what end? To, my view is that it probably has something to do with China taking over the world. Right. Right? Because it just seems like bullshit that the fucking Wuhan lab was so close to the wet market. Like, obviously, it leaked out from the lab. Right. right? That's what I think. Yes. And then I think it probably had something to do with uh, the government getting changed in America. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know whether you remember this, but Donald Trump was very anti-Chinese um, taking over, like... Uh, he wanted to reform the trade agreements and yeah, all that yeah, stuff I remember, like that. I remember, yeah. And he wanted to like get Huawei out and he was talking about banning TikTok and yeah. and then like, okay, let's you know, then he ended up losing the election and then, you know, things ended up looking a lot better for people making money. You yeah. know, like I think like Chinese power probably increased because everything gets produced in China and so much stuff is not getting produced in America. And that was one of the things that he wanted to do. Like yeah. have more American made stuff and then I bet there's just a lot of shit going on that we don't understand. And I didn't buy the vaccine stuff either. Yeah. Uh, that was a big red flag for me. Like all the vaccines and like they weren't testing them and then people got the vaccines and everybody that got the vaccine still got fucking infected. Yeah. Uh, uh, th that was weird. And I'm going, what? How, how does that work? Yeah. Well, I, what I find interesting about it, So like, again, in, in, in th those kind of situations, like I, I got one, I got one Johnson Johnson vaccine. I never got the booster or anything. I did. I just did what I had to do. Um, to, to, to travel, to travel. exactly, right. and that was not the right reason why you should get the vaccine. Yeah, you should have got the vaccine because it was going to protect you against infection. That's and right. If that was the main motivator. You'd have been like, yeah, cool. But the fact that they used all of these carrots to dangle in front of you, travel, getting into sporting events, all this sort this of shit. This girl, fuck you. She loves va vaccines. Turn her on. She, she wants vaccine jizz. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what she wants. <laughs> Vaccinated jizz. Please give it to me. <laughs> yeah. So then that became the motivator. Yeah, they, it's a. It is a funny one because I'm. On stuff like that, I just like in my mind, I was like, right, what do I have to do so that I can just live my life the way uh, I want to live it? Um, but there was what was interesting about it is that how they stigmatized vac vaccine skepticism. That was you know? that was major. You know, because like I, I myself didn't even like go down rabbit holes into it. I was just like, right, what do I have to fucking do? I because I just accepted my mind. I'm too stupid. I'm not going to fucking figure it out. I'm going to listen to some people who seem to know what they're talking about. 
Um, but then there was all these other people who also knew what they were talking about, who were saying completely opposite. There was very qualified people saying this isn't right, you mm. know. And then at that point, all I'm doing is, okay, what can I get away with? Yeah. What do I fucking need to do for me to be able to eat and sleep and live uh, my life the way I want to? But the fact that, like, when it becomes a thing of, like, if you question it, you're bad. Yeah. That's Wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Point the finger. Right. Yeah. Burn them at the stake. Like, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. then you're like, whoa. That, that, witch, hunt hey. men, that witch hunt mentality became yeah. so prevalent. And mm. it became like a us against them. And you have a different opinion to the mainstream narrative. Yes. And it was different to what I did with my body. Then fuck you. Why are you on that other team? Yeah. And you couldn't even like, dude, if you like even uh, commented like on a news article about skepticism towards taking the vaccine, so many people jumped on side. Like they, they were just comment, comment, comment. You don't know what you're talking about. You're trying to kill people. Or, or, like, do you want your grandma to die? Yeah. Remember all that shit? And maybe I do. And that's none of your business. <laughs> no, exactly. She's a bitch. She, her stories are boring. You can't <laughs> make me want her to live as well. If yeah. I want her to die, that's my business. But also, I, I know exactly what um, uh, you're talking about. And that was a thing. And, and the term as well. The term anti-vaxxer became synonymous with like fucking you know red pill fucking you know QAnon blah 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 exactly so, so what they did is they lumped in having an anti-vaccine stance with being kind of a right-wing conspiracy not fucking bro crypto you know like yeah they, they got all of them under that did. one term they did, all yeah. of the things that were like could possibly colored with a a darker, stupidic nuance. That's right. Yeah, that's you. Yes. You're one of those dumb fucks. You're one of those And then dumb in cunts. America, it also got lumped in with Donald Trump and all that sort of shit, which was like this huge fucking thing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the thing is that like that gets my like spider sense tingling is that when you have a look at like this game of taking over the world, mm. right? You have a look at like countries that are trying to take over the world and America, you could argue, trying to take over the world militarily, like after the Second World War, mm -hmm. bases all around the world, bases in Norway, bases here, bases there yeah but then you have a look at china and the yeah. way that they're trying to take over the world is economically yes you know what i mean like they have all of these deals with african countries where they give them like money to build roads and highways and then if they default on the loans then they take that shit over and they're just like i don't know exactly what the grand plan is but it seems like a lot of dynasties or like powerhouses just want more control and more power like it feels like in the next few years we're going to have to learn Chinese in school. Yeah. It's going to be a nightmare. I, dude, you know I, I, watched, mean? I watched this video of this Chinese girl saying how you say 10 different words. And it was, Zhu, 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 Zhu. It's just so many different ways yeah, of saying Zhu. Yeah, I can't. I'm struggling with English yeah. and Norwegian. Fuck learning Chinese. I don't think I'm going to manage that. And well, you got to learn how to code now, too. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's Life's too much too learning. I honestly think I'm dead serious. I'm like, I'm 31 now. I think I will, unless I get like super rich, I think 40, I will kill myself, you know? Yeah. And just get out. You got nine more good years. I've got nine more good years. I'm going to yeah. come as much as I can and then just fucking, like over the cliffs of Moher in Ireland, just fucking. Just do it fucking like live stream it or Dive something. Dive straight over. Just fucking yeah. bam. Although I know like I say this. Imagine if you didn't get any views. Like on you, my suicide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was oh. just like, your suicide was just like, nah. Nobody's it, watching. It didn't. Like, fuck. Yeah, that would be. That'd be a bummer. You'd just be like burning in hell going, no, oh. I should have used a better platform. That's right. And and it's a, <laughs> do you know, actually, even the fucking, the concept of hell, man, it, it's just, uh, now that you bring it you up. Tell me. I, 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 I never really um, considered it. Uh, like, because, okay, so I come from a super Catholic country, but like, well, say like the true, true belief mm. um, of if I do these sins, I will burn for eternity. Like, you know, when they used to make people like put their hands over the fire and be like, that's what it's going to be like for life. Um, and people did have this genuine fear before. I don't know how long ago it was when it was actually that real belief in God. Because, you know, they have that like when Nietzsche said, like, uh, God is dead and blah, blah, blah. And he also said a very interesting thing, which I, um, he, he, when he was writing about that stuff, which is like that art will never be as good or beautiful once the belief in God is gone, because no one will ever be able to commit to things in the way that they did when they believed it was to like honor the fucking 
uh, omniscient fucking being in the sky. Like no one's gonna like go up to a ceiling and have just paint dripping in their fucking eyeballs for six years like Michelangelo did because he's doing it for fucking God. Whereas yeah. like when we're just doing stuff for ourselves, it's 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 hard to do that much commitment. Or even like Mozart or all these classical fucking symphonies. Like no one has come up with anything as good since because a lot of it was this fucking like true this like belief in the divine right um but at that time as well people believed in the god but also if you believe that you're gonna fucking burn in hell forever um like that is gonna make you act in a particular fucking way right but i never understood like the the concept of hell or the pain of it till i was like recently i was in this steam room and it was so fucking hot in the steam room and after a while <laughs> I was like, I don't have to get out. And I was like, if I had to stay in this steam room for another like 10 minutes, like that. And, and then I imagine like if that was fire, mm. like actual fucking fire, like that level of just in, in intense physical fucking torture forever. And you believed that then, yeah, you're not, you're not going to fuck anyone before marriage, you know? Yeah. You really wouldn't if yeah. you bought into that fucking shit. Yeah, if you're brainwashed into believing it was 100% oh, true, you're like, man. how is that pussy really worth fucking baking in hell forever? Oh. And now we're just like, yeah, it is. Oh, there's just <laughs> yeah. so, some pussy. Well, it's shaved, you know? Now it's <laughs> shaved. And you're like, okay. Um, but I, 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 I also think, like, you know that thing where people are like, well, you know, there's some emotional pains that are worse than physical pains. I'm like, no, I don't. I think like there's yeah, nothing. You've never broken your fucking ankle. No. Yeah. yeah not yeah. at all. Yeah. Are you, you, you get your heart broken? Did she dump you? Yeah. Oh yeah. How about you're in a wheelchair now? Absolutely. Oh, what's worse? How I think you're going to move on from the fucking heartbreak. Yeah. How about a cartel cuts your cock off and puts it in your mouth? You yeah. know what I mean? That's pretty, I, I think I could put up with a, a lot of emotional trauma to avoid that. 100%. <laughs> it's just such horse. It's just, bro, the yeah. only people are, that are ever saying it are people who haven't gone through fucking horrific shit. It's like when people say, you know, you hear people saying that there's worse things than death. And it's just like, yeah, but you're saying that, but you've never died. You know, yeah, like, yeah. what on earth would you know about it? Yeah, you can't. You're not qualified to make that comment. Right. There's worse things than death. Yeah. Mm, I yeah. Think death, death's Coming kind of, yeah. From How about you person? die, come yeah. back, and then tell me. Yeah. Oh, you can't do that? Shut the fuck up. That's exactly right. It's like, <laughs> oh, but there's worse things than getting raped. Were you raped? No. Then, you know. Yeah. But, you know, you said something about, like, uh, was it Nietzsche that said, like, art without... Uh, belief isn't as strong or something. Well, well, it yeah, his that was his take. Now I'm I'm not saying that's an absolute Did truth, he, but but he's saying like even if you think of the architecture or the the like, has anything been made that's as fucking good? Like in terms of like that just a aesthetic beauty as the shit that was coming around during the the Renaissance or when people were dedicating it to. Um, this higher power, I don't know. Dude. I like I I can't. I've seen for some. Real. I've seen some TikTok videos of some chicks doing squats in like very <laughs> tight pants. Oh, that's pretty close, bro. Oh man, you know what I mean. That's T just appreciation of the female T form. You can keep your cathedrals. Oh, I I'll be honest with you, there is something. <laughs> uh, there is something to what you're saying. Yeah, uh, like man, I was on um, uh, so I moved to Barcelona over the uh pandemic and. I, I had never been to beaches in Spain before. And I, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know that they all had their, their boobies out. They all have their boobies out on the beach. Nice. And I remember being down at this beach in Barcelona and I was just lying down. And it's just, you don't even have to engage in perversion or kind of like covert, like kind of looking under your glasses. There's just a parade of mm. the most beautiful woman, women you've ever seen. Just wearing tongs. That's it. Just walking in and out your fucking eye line. And like, ha this is heaven. Mm. I, I remember, and I was like drinking, and I was with this girl, this Irish girl who I was having sex with at the time. And she was as impressed as I was. Like, I'd go for a nap. She'd wake me up to point at some tits. I was like, here's a team player. What a good girl. Like, oh, great girl. Good girl. Good girl. What a great girl. And like, she didn't, she's <laughs> Catholic as well. She didn't even have the, you know, um, the openness to allow herself to get her tits out. Um, but I remember thinking, yeah, there is nothing better than more pleasing than this mm. aesthetically. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And unbelievable. That's natural. You don't need religion to appreciate the naked oh. female body to oh. appreciate the two titties. Oh, but the titties, lads, lad, growing up in Ireland, like literally, the only time you would see boobies on a beach growing up is if like a dead body washed up. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Are there beaches in Ireland? 
Oh, there are, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they but are. They must suck, right? They are miserable. Mm. Miserable places. Like, the water is freezing. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. It's just, they're, like, they're just like, they are like, just like, it's Catholic beaches. Yeah. That's what they are. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? They're just for, to punish sinners, go to the beach in Ireland. Like, you're just, <laughs> like, the fucking cold. Like, the Atlantic. You're getting into the Atlantic. It's like, this is our holiday? Torture mm. is our holiday, but even our holidays in general, because we would go um, on holidays in Ireland, so from Ireland to Ireland, so it's just from a shit place to a worse place. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, Ireland's like beautiful, um, aesthetically, like you look out the window, it's green and uh, all the rest of it, and if that floats your boat, you know, you're going to be hired as a rock, but uh, <laughs> like going on holidays there, like you're just, it's raining, you're miserable, like... Thank, there was no Instagram back then, but if there was, you know, you couldn't even make it look like you're having a good time. No. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Where about in Ireland are you from? It's a place called Kilkenny. So it's like just kind of a, a, an agricultural spot. It's like down the southeast of Ireland. It's about an hour and a half from Dublin. Yeah. We'll okay. Have you been yeah. to Dublin? I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, when I went to Ireland, I, I stayed with family. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Your granddad's Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a family in Kerry. Ah, mm. lovely. Yeah, and Galway. Yeah. So I went to visit them. Do you understand people down in Kerry? Do you it, was very, it was a challenge. It's I, challenge. I, I couldn't even understand my granddad. Yeah. And I saw him every fucking weekend. Yeah. And like, he lived in Australia for 50 years by the time I was born. And I was like, oh shit, I had to really tune into this motherfucker. He never lost the accent. I find it unbelievably impressive. I, I was just watching this podcast with um, Lex Friedman and this uh, lady from the northeast of England. She's from a mining town there. Um, but she's lived in America for like 30 years. She was like an advisor to George Bush, Obama, Trump on like Eurasia and like Russia and stuff like this. And um, and she just still had Northern English accent talking like that. And I was like, how? Like I was in America for two years and this is again, different personality types and maybe I just have a weak sense of self. But like after two years in America, I was just like, hey dude, What's going on, man? And I just <laughs> where, where, were you living in California or something? No, I was living in Chicago, so it didn't even make sense. <laughs> no, what are you I was doing? like, hey, Calvin, good eat. I was just <laughs> such a fucking loser. And I came back to Ireland then with that. No! Yeah. You imported it back home? Sounding yeah. like a fucking California sofa? Well, see, that's it. And you know, Irish people hate that. They don't like they don't like you changing you doing, in any bro? way, shape, yeah, or form. Yeah. Why do you sound different? Oh, they're, they're just like, what the fuck are you doing? Stop saying dude. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, I thought it's awesome, man. They're like, shut <laughs> up. Stop. And I'm like, you stop, dude. You're not being sick, dude. And it's just like, you know, I was just, uh, and I just got it, like, in about a week, I got it, like, you know, verbally bullied out of me again. But um, I see these people, like, there's Irish people who've been living like that from fucking Kerry. He's lived in Australia 50 years. And who are you going? I'm from Kitty. Talking like that. You know, like they're talking this kind of barely graspable fucking kind of song. Mm. <laughs> His song fucking speech. Yeah, yeah. It's you like know? that in Norway too with the song speech. Really? Yeah, you probably noticed like with the way the Norwegians talk, with the like the the, the tone going up and down. It's it, very melodic. It is. But it's very yeah. hypnotizing as well. Like I've noticed like with like They could be fingering you without you knowing. Going, I'm like, what, what happened? Whose finger is that? The hell? What are you doing? What? Yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone. All right, I just came in. I thought you were a gynecologist. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but like there is a very hypnotic flow about certain accents which really lend themselves to comedy. And I think that the yeah. Irish have it, and I think Norwegians have it as well. Like yes. when you're listening to like a good Norwegian fucking comedian just singing you the jokes, yeah, you're just hooked in. Like that melody is hypnotizing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and it actually since then, and since uh, I had that kind of brush in America with losing my Irish accent, since then I have been on a mission to just like I'm very conscious of not losing it and even uh, making it more pronounced in a way because then after that because i actually had a quite uh and i don't know if people have this just from where they're from but i had a quite a love-hate relationship with ireland when i was younger because i was like you know irishness just kind of fucking uh, annoyed me you mm. know like even like because we are very like i don't know we're a bit self-congratulatory in ireland like we're all we are all fucking delighted to be irish and we think we're 
we're unreal. And now that may be just a general human condition thing that people are enamored with their own nationalities. Although, you know, you get like in England, like you have a lot of people being like, I was so sorry for what we did. And so, and I hate that as well. It's too. You know, it's like, just be fucking proud. You yeah, took yeah. over the world. Yeah, Look yeah. at this shitty little island. You took over the world. Stop <laughs> it. Hey, I'm sorry. We shouldn't have done that in India. Just... <laughs> Stop being a weasel, you know. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't you. Don't it, take credit no, for that. Because you, you're, you're you're taking credit to say sorry. You're taking credit. Exactly. You didn't do fucking shit. <laughs> you You've would... been wanking in an attic for the last two years. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, like so in Ireland, I remember. Uh, you know, I there, there was a time when I was younger. That I just wanted to get away from it, the Irishness. Um, because uh, I was like, I felt felt a kind of oppressive especially being from a rural place in ireland i felt like uh, you know because and this is probably rural places everywhere but and this is why people leave small towns and why fucking bruce springsteen has a career fucking singing about it but uh you know i felt you know i couldn't be myself and i i'd always want to do acting shit like that so um, did you feel you couldn't be yourself because the uh, amount of possibilities in the small town were so limited or was it a there was that and then just anything you did that was different people would be like you're gay you know oh yeah, so it was that culture there was that culture yeah oh, that's fucked up yeah but I, and i think that was probably one that we, you would have probably found in places in australia places all over it's just anything different mm. is gay i mean people were very homophobic mm. back back then we kind of forget it now because it's like times have changed and it's just on fucking cool and rightly so uh, to be homophobic, but back then, everything, like, you fucking, you were drinking a Capri Sun, you're gay, you know, in a certain way. Dude, um, I, I, sorry, I, I have a story about a friend of mine who was in Perth, actually, yeah. and he was walking with a pair of purple shorts on, <laughs> and some asshole in the car just stopped next to him and goes, your pants are fucking gay, <laughs> and then just drove off, and he's yeah. like, well, I'm wearing purple shorts, like, yeah. relax, dude. I, well, I had a similar experience when I was in Boston, actually, in 2011, and Boston is just full of fucking um second or first generation irish people yeah you know but they become more irish they're all just wearing t-shirts with shamrocks like fucking window <laughs> lickers um so they're all just wandering around and uh and i remember me and my friends we were walking down the street and we we're wearing these shorts that are they're gaa shorts which is ireland's na national sports but but they're shorter shorts than like regular sports I know shorts, what you mean. I know so they're kind of short shorts yeah. in a little way. Uh, we don't like to look at them like they're hot pants or anything. That would upset the players. But so we're walking down in these shorts, and these guys just fucking drove by, and they were just like faggots, you know. <laughs> yeah, and they just yeah. fucking drove on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That uh, was so normal then. Huh? That was normal. That's like that's yeah. That normal attitude to saying like the word faggot or oh, your yeah. fucking shorts are gay. Yeah, that's just how it was. Yeah, right. And, and and people like that. There was also what was great as well. It was just this kind of like people would take on this juvenile uh, attitude towards policing gayness, mm. where they're just you know you know we haven't been hired by the state to do this, but this they're, is kind of like, like the, a, they're like the Avengers of homophobia. That's right. Yeah, there's like this. We're making a citizens arrest here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, where they're yeah, just yeah. like faggot. You know, <laughs> um, uh, just a kind of natural policing of it. And then like we were all kind of looking at each other in our shorts and like, oh, maybe we are. Maybe we are fags. We're what, fags. What are we, are we doing? What are we doing here, lads? <laughs> let's get some well, pants. Let's, let's put some fucking well, what, what you doing pants in, on and throw rocks at minorities. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get our street cred back. Why were you in America for two years? Well, well so, um, well, the first time, this time I'm talking to you there about America, I was in Boston in 2011 on a J1, which is like a lot of Irish people do. It's um, it's when you're in college, you can go to America for the summer and work. You get a, a, a summer long visa. It's just whatever um, agreement they have between the governments. And then there's also a thing called a graduate visa. That's when you uh, qualify or get your degree or your qualification. You can go and work in America for a year yeah. afterwards. So that's when I lived there. I lived. That's when I lived in Chicago for two years. We um, do, were you doing comedy then? Yeah. So that's oh, why wow. I. That's why I went. Um, you went for comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. That's right, yeah, yeah. Damn. And how was the Chicago scene in 2011? Um, no, so 2011 was Boston. Um, I went to Chicago in 2015. Yeah, okay. So um, it was... Uh, so I went, actually... So I was doing, at the time, I had just kind of started stand-up. I had done a couple of gigs, and, and I'd been doing improv for about a year. I'd done year classes, and Chicago is like the fucking improv capital of the world yeah it's like um second city there's the improv olympic like um every almost every like great sketch actor you can think of went through there um like chris farley mike myers all these guys um 
so in my head, that's why I went there. Also, there's a great open mic stand-up scene and a uh, great kind of independent stand-up comedy scene there. Uh, so that's what I did. I went there with the just sole objective of just doing comedy every single night um, for a year. And I did it. I started taking classes in this place, the Improv Olympic, like doing improv classes. But I got to about three levels of that. And then I was like, ah, fuck this improv stuff. Like, I liked it. Like, when improv goes well, improv's unbelievable. Like, it's like, and if you see the best improvisers in the world improvising, I think it's better than stand-up. Like, it's it's funnier because you see people working together. It's so quick, the acting. Like, it's just amazing. But 99% of it is such utter scoury dog shit. Um, it's unbelievable. Like, when you reach the top, amazing, but most of it's bad. And I remember I got in this, uh, like, an improv team. Mm. And the improv team... They just, they stunk so bad. And I was in it, but they're so nice. And all improv people, they're so nice and supportive. Sickeningly so. Almost a rejection of the reality of the world. But they're so nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know exactly you, what you, you mean. You know those yeah, people yeah. when when they, I, I, it's something I really can't stand with people who's when they just deny reality. When you're like, ah, that was bad. They're like, no, it's great. No. Like, do you know when you come off saving and you, and, and you bomb? Mm. Like if you bombed and you come off and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. I bombed it. They're like, no, you killed it. And you're like, fuck off. I was there. What are, Do you think I'm just going to be like, oh, actually, I didn't really. You know, I was there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't. Uh, you can't deny the, re the, the, the. You can't deny the object, object, objective reality of what happens. That's right. But in improv, maybe they do. Well, well, no, they do. They, but it's all about just this like supportiveness. But but it's with a lack. A lot of times, it's with a lack of critical thinking. Yeah, that, that, that's what it becomes a problem because yeah. you're not objectively trying to get better by analyzing things that went wrong. Right. You're just oh no, it was great. There's uh, the funnies in the failure or whatever the uh, all these other catchphrases that they have. That's absolutely right. And and they're. It just becomes this kind of like circle jerk of like positivity. But anyway, um, so I was in this team team with these people, and they were so nice. They baked me a cake. I remember on my birthday and everything. And but I just I had to lie to them. Actually, I told them because I couldn't just tell them the truth. I felt too bad because mm. they were so fucking like nice to me. Like you're the best, Mike. We're gonna like they baked me a cake. <laughs> they had like a little fucking. They put a little Irish flag on the cakes like for your birthday. So like I told them like that I was getting deported. Mm. Um, and that's, that's how you got out of the team. That's how I got out. I, honest to God, I told them I was leaving. And then like, you know, a few months later, I'd be walking down the street. And I'd, like, they'd like see me. They'd be like Mike, and I'd be like, I, I you know, just like, <laughs> were, were you still here? I gotta fucking go, guys. You know. And then you just focused on comedy. I just stand up, and I just did stand up uh, every night every night for it ended up being two years because i was there a year and then i got what's known as a, a holiday visa so you, i got six month extension to like travel america and then i got another six month extension to travel america i wasn't traveling america i was working in a place called uh whirly ball uh which is bowling alley quasar laser tag and stuff i was doing that about three days a week for money and then i was just doing fucking open mics every night and uh and it was just an unbelievable like boot camp and start to stand up because it like taught me um just how to fucking write jokes and tag stuff and just like you know especially there i mean the competition is so intense and it's like it's an american art form the, the standard is just so high in terms of um like writing and just laughs per minute uh, specifically that, that, i think that's such an important concept yeah laughs per minute you got to keep the train moving yeah, but like it's like sometimes people come up and they're, they're, they'll be like, "Oh, that went great! I killed." It. And it's like, "No, you didn't." No, you know, you you your bits worked, but your bits aren't written structurally to get enough laughs per minute. So even if your bit goes as well as it can go, you've got you know two laughs in a minute, or you do a ninety second setup for two big laughs, and mm. that's just not enough. What's your ratio when you're writing a joke? Do you have a laughs per minute? You're trying to hit a certain amount? Yeah, yeah. What definitely. is that? Well, so it depends on how long the setup takes, but you want as little time um, in between. Uh, like, obviously, you want as many laughs as you can. Mm -hmm. But sometimes a longer setup can be worth it. Like, if it's a 40-second setup or a 50-second setup, it's worth it if you're going to have seven laughs in a row on the end. Mm. You know? So, like, the, the way my mind works on bits is, like, uh, particularly um, as a writing exercise, if I get a bit that works and it's got, okay, we've got two laughs here, 
on this bit. Um, instead of being like, okay, well, let's see what other bits I can write. I'll be like, how can I make this two laughs into seven laughs, eight laughs? Because particularly one of the best ways I think to like gain material is like working on bits you already have that work. Yeah. Because the because the, the the audience already agree that this is funny and this is a funny premise. So now you're inside this world that they agree is funny. So now you can start. And then what if this happened? And what if this? Then you can throw in hypotheticals. Then you can take it from this angle and just really fucking make your bits like dense as fuck. Mm. So then instead of having a bit that's uh, two minutes long, you can make that you can make that into seven minutes, you know? Um, and that's the way I, I would think about it. Okay, you know? so you're just, um, are you like just adding tags and different perspectives and, and mining into the yes, premise? And just absolutely. what else can we get? That's right. And act outs and the uh, act outs um yeah hypotheticals what how would this be seen from another perspective or this or that um and sometimes you can go overkill on these things as well and it's like yeah you should have just ended it back there um and you can tinker too much but in general yeah it's like uh you know especially if you're like if you're trying to build a lot of material like you know so i'll be going to edinburgh next august and i want a new show for then mm. you know you want to fucking milk stuff and it's like and then using everything that mm. you have in your um arsenal in yeah. terms of like can you do voices can you do act outs can you um you know do make laughs through repetition like jokes one liner like there's so many ways like physical you can get you can add in tags that are just looks, yeah. that are just the way you move your face, the way you move your body, and um, the way, you know, going from high to low with your voice, like absolutely everything. I mean, that's the great thing about stand-up comedy is that it's just, um, and I heard like Seinfeld saying this once, but it's just never ending. The amount, that, like how much you can get better and it's just a never ending puzzle as to, you know, because it's just, ev there's, there's the, the, the timing, the content, um, you know, it's the reading the audience, it's the working off the timing of the audience, it's your voice, it's your body, it's your fucking, it's your confidence. People feel it. I mean, that's the amazing thing is like, if you, if you're on stage and you feel any bit of anxiety or weakness, like they're just like, the audience are like fucking dogs, you know? They tune into it. They just, mm. They smell it. Yeah. They yeah. fucking smell it. Yeah, they, they smell like it, it on you. They don't oh nah, no. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Because they didn't they didn't fucking come here to 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 to, to be worried. No. Nah. You know? And they and they resent it if they have to be. It's like, you know, it's like they don't it's like that uh, old thing and it's not my line, but like they don't want uh, uh, a pilot to come on and be like, Hey, I might land the plane. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want you to come on and be like, "I'm landing the fucking plane." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I think that's so important. I think that's a really good way of saying it as well, because a lot of the times when you see like a good comedian who's going on stage, they're like, "I got this. I got this. Absolutely. I, 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 I got this. I've done this before. You guys are in good hands." And then yeah. even if like if you're in a lineup and maybe the comedian before you or the host isn't really crushing it, yeah. Okay, not the ideal circumstances for you to perform, but if you go in there with that confidence, like I know that we're going to go on a journey together and I've taken this journey many, many, many times. That's and right. I'm a fucking frequent flyer and all aboard motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they, and you can, you really can, and I've seen it done, you can switch a gig instantly mm. with your energy. Like the, the crowd can be like, uh, and then depending on the, your first few seconds on stage, you can really let them know just like, Right, this is a different, this is a different thing you're about to see here, and they just sense it, and they're just, you know, mm. and they're just in on it, and it can happen that quick. Yeah, you can switch a gig with just your fucking energy, posture, attitude, everything, um, and they just feel it emanating out of you, you know, and it's the same thing, and that's why it's like important. Like last night, we had to fucking. We did this gig in Oslo, and we had to do like an hour and a half of fucking moving chairs down and shit. Yeah. Um for this gig, despite the fact we're paying unbelievable rent in this place. Um, so then you don't get, you know, I, I, I believe you just need a bit of time before you go on to just, to, to, to be focused, you know? Hmm. Um, I think focus is a, to me is one of the most important aspects of it, is like to go on, like you can't be like, you know, like just on your fucking like, duh, 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 duh. oh, am I up? And then you're like, you know, duh, duh, duh. you know, cause your mind is full of fucking, gunk like you just need those few minutes to be like 
okay what's the first thing i'm going to say what's the is there a joke i could make about uh, the room mm. or something that really puts me right fucking here mm. or a joke to be made about something someone else said mm. and just really fucking be dialed in yeah be dialed in and put yourself to the audience put yourself in there right here right now yeah he's right here right now yeah he's with us you know yeah um and that's why i uh, like i i went through a time where i'd be on my fucking phone before gigs and i remember once i was like i just have to turn this like an hour before the gig just like turn it off yeah and just like off yeah. like that i can't be you know and it's the same because we're addicts with our phone it's like I, it's just like I'd like to think I could have my phone on and just in my pocket and I won't be fucking looking at it, but I will. It's like if you're a, a heroin addict and you have to go do front. It's like, right, put the heroin away. You can't just have it there and be like, I won't touch it. You will touch it, yeah. you know? Um, but I, I can't look at my phone before I'm going on stage because I, could, I get messages from so many people about stupid shit. Yeah. And it's like, were you picking up your son tomorrow at three? I'm like, I can't fucking think about what I'm going to do tomorrow at three. Like, yeah. I need to be like really, really, really paying attention to... Yeah. Like what's happening, how I'm feeling. Like sometimes if you're tired, you're like, okay, I got to psych myself up and just make sure that I'm where where, where the show needs to go. Mm. Yeah. Do you find in general with like your phone, like I, I'm one of those people now and I don't know if I'll do it because I, I don't know if I can practically do it. Because even like like when Victor's on stage, I, I take pictures of him and videos because it's for the promotion and stuff. But in general life, like my, f like I, I'm really overwhelmed with my fucking phone like like that like what you're saying like just so many messages from people you're so contactable mm. with fucking whatsapp and these other things mm. and i feel violated a lot of the time like it's just like your message i hate that you can fucking message me even mm. on instagram or anything it's like everyone has fucking access to you you know and it just it can just really um uh dominate my headspace or really just fucking hijack yeah um my mental attention to the point where it's like, I mean, it's bad for creativity. Like it's, you know. I, I never start the day by looking at my phone. Never. What do you do? I, I start the day by thinking of what my objectives are for that day. Right. And I have a list of things that I usually wrote the night before. And then I'll consult the list. Okay, this okay. is what I need to do. And I'm going to be on the offensive. I got to take care of this, 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 this. And I'm going to do this. And then I'll be like, okay, a little bit later on, I'll have time to be reactionary. So I always want to start the day from a proactionary standpoint so that I accomplish the goals that I set for myself the night before. And I found that when I start checking my phone and reading emails and things like that, then I start getting dragged into somebody else's wish list. I start getting dragged into what other people want me to do with my day. And then that ends up being so stifling that sometimes I don't accomplish the things that I was set out to do because I'm reacting instead of being proactive. Okay, so how do you how do you achieve that? Do you, do you put your phone in a different room? Do you like... Uh, yeah, in the morning? Yeah, or, or you know, like, because... I, I go for a walk. Okay. Yeah, so I, I sometimes I have my phone in my room. A lot of the times I have it in another room uh, for when I'm sleeping, and then I'll wake up, and I'll be like, okay, cool. And then uh, what I usually like to do is... Uh, just leave the house and go for a walk around the block. Is that... Because I, I was doing that for a while as well and I thought it was great. And on tour, it's a funny thing because all discipline kind of seems to dissolve a little bit. Yeah. Um, In terms of everything, you know, like food and uh, health and stuff. But I, I had listened to that on this Andrew Huberman podcast. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, I know who he is. But yeah, but he was saying that, like, it's, like, one of the most important things you can do is to just... As soon as you get up, like get fucking daylight hitting your fucking pupils, mm. um, and it like all activates all these fucking mad places in your brain, and you're just like, you know, it's it's just incredibly beneficial. And I I did that for ages as well. Just get up and go for a walk at that, and uh, I thought it was unbelievable. Like it's, it's so just good, right? Like yeah. walking is so good for the soul, yeah. And like all the other biological uh, positive benefits of like the sunlight on as much exposed skin as possible, yeah. amazing. But just to have that headspace and make mm -hmm. a plan for what I'm going to do with my day, which is a fucking five, ten minute walk. It's yeah. not really even long. And then I don't take my phone with me when I do that. So I, I look at my phone as like some fucking slave device. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like this compelling thing that just summons you to always look at it. And I'm like, I, yeah. can't, I can't have that with me when I have uh, such little time to just be alone with my own thoughts. And the time in the morning is critical for me oh yeah critical and then what i'll also do is i'm not going to just constantly check my phone 
like I'm going to say, okay, now I'm going to check it like once every hour and I, I won't go into apps uh, or I'll say, okay, now I have like, I'm on a bus for like 20 minutes or something. N I'm not doing shit. N now I can like reply to people, but uh, being constantly available is death for your own soul. And you can't do that. You just get torn in so many different directions. Right. So I have to like be really diligent and be really focused on it because like I've been through phases where I've had like 200 fucking pickups in a day and I check my uh, screen time and stuff like that. And sometimes it's bad and I go, oh, that's too bad. 200 pickups. Is that you picked up your phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Times? Yes. And that's crazy. Does it fucking log that shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It logs wow. it. Wow. Yeah. So like I'll go through phases where I'm more um, like addictive to the phone and then I go, oh, I'm getting too addicted to the phone. I yeah. Gotta, like be really conscious because it just draws you in. It's so addictive. But as well, there's a fucking filthy feeling with it. Like it's like because it's, it's non-consensual. Like as in... You know, obviously, look, we have to take responsibility for our, our uh, all our own actions, but um, but so much of it is playing on our subconscious, just like fuck. Because you know, if you turn your phone off, you just really realize how much you just go. Like, da, da, oh, 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 yeah, I turned it off. I don't want. I I don't want to use you. Mm. You know, you you little slut. Um, but uh, it's playing on. Like, I, I did. You watch that uh, film, The Social Dilemma? Yeah. That that like scared the living shit out of me. Yeah. Because when when you hear the guys who designed all this shit, they're so smart. Oh, they're geniuses. They're geniuses, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're telling you exactly what it's designed to do. It's, it's designed to steal mm -hmm. your fucking attention, your life, your time. Yeah. And it's so unnourishing. It's like fucking McDonald's for the mind. It you is. Know? That's exactly what it is. It's just yeah. like. When you come off using, it's like, you know, after you meet McDonald's, it's like, num, num, yo, and then just like literally five minutes later, you're like, oh, why did I fucking put this shit in my body again? Yeah. You the, know? The worst is when you get caught in these infinite scroll loops. Yeah. When you're just sitting there like, next, next, next. Oh, and they just pop up automatically and you're just watching them forever. And you go, fuck, I was supposed to send a text message to my yeah. mom. And now I've just been watching this shit for 30 minutes. What did I do? And I feel like I've been robbed. Yeah. I yeah, feel yeah. like I need a fucking, like I'm a fucking, you know, I've been molested. You know, I'm going into a shower and crying. Just like, oh, you know, I honestly, <laughs> yeah, it's that's dirty. It, it feels dirty as shit. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just struggling with it, and I just need, I guess, I just need to put in fucking procedures and practices like you're doing. I think so. You just um, gotta have like a, a certain amount of time set to that, and yeah. then the rest of the time set to yourself. So, are you doing like, like, what's your story? You're, you're doing, you're obviously, you're podcasting, you're doing comedy. This is your place here. Mm. This is all your shit. Yeah, you yeah. employ these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's what's the what's the story? What's is this a company? Yeah, Are you... this, is, this is a company. Right. So I make uh, videos and do photos for brands and companies in Norway. That's how I earn cash. Yeah. So all this like cameras and stuff like that, we're all like uh, qualified filmmakers and photographers. Oh wow. Yeah, that's it. That's that's you're a filmmaker. Thing. Yeah, I'm a filmmaker. Ah. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, and then I just kind of like, uh, well, with, with me, I like doing new things with an infinite amount of uh, potential. Yeah. So like, I, I felt like I did very well in filming and things like that. And then I wanted to try something that scared me. And then I started to get into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I did that for seven years now. And then I, I how are you liking that? I love it. Oh, it's the best. Everyone seems to, it, it gets them rock hard. This was, my brother's doing it now. And exactly. it, it's like, he can't, you're, you're like, you know, at dinner and you're like past the pepper. And he's like, do you know about BJJ? And you're like, just give me the, you <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's like the veganism of the sports Absolutely. world. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You have to just tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. He's like telling my father, my father's like 70 year old family. My father's like, oh. my father doesn't like Anthony. That's different either. Mm. He's like, BJJ, you know, it just sounds gay to him. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. he's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but that, like, everyone that does it is just, and I know, I because I want to start doing it too, and I know I'll be a nightmare once I start. Oh, you'll you know? love it. You'll yeah. fucking tell everybody. You'll I start will. fucking broadcasting it to hundreds of people a night. Absolutely. Like, uh, and the jokes are finished. Start jujitsu. <laughs> it changed my life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it will change your life. Will it? A hundred percent. But in what way, like, in what way are you, has it changed your life, like, mentally? Are yes. you just like? Yes. Yeah. Me mentally, strategically, Ooh. physically. And emotionally, that that sounds gay as fuck. That and sounded really gay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it really will because you'll form <laughs> these like deep connections with your teammates and other people. And with jujitsu, you're in vulnerable situations all the time. Yeah, like you'll have some dude's fucking arms around your neck squeezing. Yeah, and then you've got to just trust him that when you tap, he's gonna stop. Yeah, and then when you do that, you form a connection with somebody who basically had your life in their hands. 
So you're developing these deep connections with other men who are trained killers. Right. And what it also does is it makes you dangerous. Like you yeah. become a weapon. You're basically learning the art of murder. That's yeah. literally what you're learning how to do. When you strangle somebody, you have the ability to end their life. If you wanted to. Does that make you feel like God or anything? Yeah, oh, dude. I tell, well, I'm most of the one getting strangled. So <laughs> it, it, makes me f- it makes me feel like somebody at the mercy of God. Well, you're like, you're, you're feeling both uh, the, the extreme power and then the extreme powerlessness exactly. at and, the and, same and time. The, and the part that changes my life personally yeah. is the powerlessness. Yes. Because if I'm powerless in this situation, Okay, I can fight and do everything I can, but I'm still not able to get out of this bad spot and I have to tap. And then it makes me think, okay, if you're like in a bad situation, like on stage or in writing or with your phone or with something else, you know, you can understand that there's a pathway to, (laughs) you know, uh, (laughs) overcoming those obstacles. I just find it very funny, the idea of just tapping on stage. Yeah, yeah, right. (laughs) But you see see people tapping on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, You see them tapping. You see like, this is the lion tape and he lost the whip and the lions yeah. are going to eat him alive. That's right. And you see the soul break. Yeah. You see the soul yeah. break. And you go, oh, you just mentally tapped to the crowd here. Yeah. You lost your mojo, motherfucker. That's right. And you got to do everything you can to not just, do that. Just not do it. And there's times where you just, because it's like that, you feel a strangle. Like if you're just, you know, they're not digging you and you feel a tightening of your chest and you just have to kind of go, breathe and just don't let them see. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. just turn and face them and just fucking fuck you. <laughs> you know? Fuck you. <laughs> you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. Yeah. But fuck jiu- off. Jiu- jiu-jitsu helps you understand strategy. Right. And it helps you understand what kind of attributes you have. Mm. So like me, I'm 100 kilos, right? So if you had a look at like, a, I'm more like uh, the Hulk. Yeah. And I could go against somebody who's more like Spider-Man mm. or somebody who's more like Captain America. You know, like you have all of these different attributes that you recognize in yourself. And then you start realizing in a relationship, what attributes do I have that could make this relationship better? Or in a business situation, what are my personal attributes? Because those are the things that you have. And then you learn to understand and recognize them and then apply them in different situations. Ah, Yeah, so there's a whole fucking mental uh, like rhythm and gymnastics going on in your head. And you understand all of this because you're in different situations in jiu-jitsu. Wow. Yeah, it's actually amazing. Dude. I, you would love it. A comedian, I, it's, I, I know a bunch of comedians that train. And I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it. See, I've been on the road now since July. I've been like, uh, I live in London, but I've been just, I've been out of it. I've been there for two weeks, I think, since like the 20th of July, between traveling and different things, um, which is good. I'm working a lot, but I've made a conscious decision. When I'm back now, I'm back on the 18th or something. Like I'm just not fucking traveling for a while. Good. Like, as in, like, you know, I'm just going to get, get rooted down. Yeah. You know, like, when I'm there, you know, I'm in the gym, everything like that. But I want to get into, I want to get into fucking jujitsu. I want to start a podcast, like, properly, like this shit, you know, like, fucking. I, I've done, I've had my own podcast before and different things. I still do one every week on uh, for a Patreon. Um, but, like, just get myself into these fucking good habits. Because it's tough if you're fucking, if you're moving around all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. you're on tour. Yeah. How can you maintain like any kind of consistency? D- do you find then, since then, the the, the, the mental health is, 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 is good? On tour? No, for you in general. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah, it is very good. Yeah. Very good. Because I'm doing things that I am passionate about and that mm-hmm. I'm inspired by and that I want to do. Like yeah. nobody's telling me to fuck it. You have to do this. Right. I, I'm just doing it because I want to do it. Like mm-hmm. nobody's telling you you have to go on tour or go on stage. Yeah. But you do it and you realize that this is the shit that I love and I'm fucking dedicating my time to it. And you know people that are dedicating their time to shit that they hate. And then you go, uh, yeah. oh, fuck that. I'm going to do the thing that I love. And then that puts you in a mental space, which is like really rewarding. You're like, I love doing this. I love just doing shit that I love doing. Yeah, it, it 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 life is simple when you put it in uh, terms like that, you know. But people get it in. It's amazing, even in their heads, like my the way my parents think and everything. And like I'm I I'm making uh, decent money from comedy now, so they're fine. But like for the longest time, they're they're just like you you can't do that. Mm. You can't do that. Or people are you know because everyone is bought into these are the things you have to do. Yeah, and work is not supposed to be fun. 
Mm. Right? That's a terrible attitude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, that's yeah. A, like my father's attitude in life was like, life is a miserable, rotten slog and then you die. <sighs> and he's that. milking cows every morning and evening his whole life and he hates milking cows. Now, he does love being, he loves being a farmer. Like he loves the community of it. He loves owning fucking land. He loves being, you know, he does feel he is better than most people and he gets a buzz out of that. Um, but, that's the that's the way a lot of people have thought, but you can see what it does to some people like that were like when we were eighteen, there were, there was a spark and dry and they were fucking fun, funny cunts. And it's like ten years on of them just doing job like just day in, day out, doing shit that does nothing for their soul. And they actually like you meet them and they're a shadow of themselves now. Like yep. they're just not that person and it's just been fucking ground out of them like could you imagine you know? a worst existence than doing something that you hate with the best hours of your day yeah like eight hours from nine to five i yeah. fucking hate it but i have to do it because that's what i've been told to do ah oh right but it's I, life rape you're yeah just, it is your life is being pillaged it is and you me. have one of them and yeah. you have like today and you have tomorrow and who knows how long that goes on for yeah, the way I look at it and I say to people, I just want to do what I want to do tomorrow. Yeah. That's it. I want to wake up and be able to do what I want to do, mm. you know? And, like, obviously in life there are things, you have responsibilities, blah, blah, blah. And even sometimes you don't want to go for a run in the immediate, the experiential me might not want to right now. But the uh, now, have you ever heard of this? I just heard someone say recently, I thought it was fucking great, like that there's kind of two versions of yourself, the narrative you and the experiential you. So... There's yeah. like, so the experiential you is just the you right now, like what, you know, I, oh, the donuts, I want to eat them or, you know, I, I don't want to go to the gym or blah, blah, blah. And that's the want of right now. But there is a greater want from you of like the, the you that's not the mind or the you that's not just a slave to impulse and, you know, immediate gratification. And that you, which is more closer to the real you at the end of the day, that's you at the end of the day. What will I be happy that I've done? Exactly. And that's, I want to go for a run. I want to have not eaten that shit food. I wanted this. And that will That's the higher purpose you. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. No, but that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I look at myself as a dog, right? I, yeah. My body and my, like, you know, that now yes. this is what the dog wants. Yes. But guess what? <laughs> yeah, that's what I that's what I think of myself. <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a dog and yes. I have a dog owner. And the yeah. dog owner needs, the dog needs to run. The that dog <laughs> needs to go outside. You know what it's I mean? It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And yeah, it, yeah. it just works for me. And if I feel like the dog is in control, then the dog is a glutton. The dog is lazy. Yes. The dog just wants to stay inside. The dog wants to play video games. I was like, no, 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 the no. The dog's no. just sitting there with leg hooked up, sucking its own dick. You exactly. Know? Yeah. And you can fall into that trap, but you need to be the master of your own dog. And that's the higher purpose you. And then that's what leads to this fulfilling, flourishing life that you look back on when you're 75 or 80 and you yeah. go, I fucking did it. <laughs> I went for it. That's right. I love that. Because then sometimes you, you have to give the dog a treat. You, you have know? to. Oh, fuck that. The dog needs go a gram of coke. Or do <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. The dog wants to lick piss off the floor. He's and some been a good brawl. boy. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. You've been a good dog. That's doggy. right. Yeah, because oh, you've got to recognize that, that you're so, you need rewards, you need treats, but you got to work and it's got to be in balance. And That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think of it like that with your body. Like, it's like, I, I have thought of that. Not in the, that's a great way you've put it there. But the analogy sometimes I think with my, like, body is like that. It is like, a, like, in, and when I see people who have let themselves get very out of shape, it's like, oh man, it's like you, your dog, your body needs to be taken for a run. Mm -hmm. and they, it's like as someone who's just left his dog inside all the time, and the dog now is just yeah dead in the eye. And it's like you've let that happen to your to your body, and you yeah, only got yeah, one. Yeah, you only you got know? one, and you only got one life. So that's right. Th that's why I think it's really awesome that you and Victor are yeah. doing this fucking European comedy tour. And you're just doing night after night, show after show, crush, yeah. crush, crush, mm. doing what you love. That's yeah. so inspiring to me. Mm. You know what I mean? You're fucking doing it. Like this yeah. is your life and you're doing what you want to do with it. And it's fucking awesome. It is great. Yeah. I will say that. It is great. Dude, I got to tell you, man, like I just, I'm so fucking like, we did these uh, Norwegian tours and they were great. And uh, I'm definitely like not outgrown Norway again as a scene, but it would be a dream to do like a European tour. Well, and, and what, what, what it will do for you as well is, um, I was talking to one of your friends outside there, but he was like, oh yeah, he's like, um, I don't know how well, well I could do on an, is doing it in English because it's, you know, a lot of it's about my hometown in Norway. And it's like, yeah, you know, 
it's if you want to maximize your um time if you're creating uh content or create writing comedy you know think about the bigger picture when you're because you don't want to spend three years writing an act that can only work in one fucking place mm. you know what i mean the human condition is everywhere mm. you know so like jealousy hunger having a father having a mother having a relationship cheating shitting fucking whatever the fuck stumbling and fucking you know impaling yourself uh on a gate whatever it is these are all everywhere every there's so much in the universe of the human condition that happens everywhere to everyone that to you know to write or to put too much time into writing specifically don't get me wrong have your opener about the local city or about the thing that that can smash and get you into the fucking set but don't you know, it, well, it's not that don't do whatever you want. Like, that's the thing. Do whatever you want. Maybe you're, you have no aspirations to do comedy outside this place. But, you know, for yourself, um, if you want to broaden your horizons, just have a think of like, oh, okay, would this, if I went to London, would this work? Would people know what I'm talking about? If I went to fucking, you know, Berlin, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And then just be like, because a lot of times it, it there might only be little tweaks to make it universal or, or whatever. But I think when people are writing, especially now the flights are cheap, like with globalization, everything, you know, you could be playing so many places. There's so many scenes. So don't fucking pigeonhole yourself with that stuff, I think. You know? Dude, you nailed it. Mm. I think that's a good way to end the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. Hey, I just want to say I really enjoyed talking to you. Oh, you too, man. And it's, it's, it, I, one of the things I love about the podcast is a lot of the times the only t the first time I meet somebody is when we're just sitting here having a pretty fucking in-depth conversation about things that we know a lot about or that we don't know shit about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's a good, I think sometimes it's good. It's a good if you don't know the person in podcast terms because then it can actually just be a natural discovery yeah. with one another. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. Rather than trying to replay. <laughs> yeah, I can never replay a conversation. That's I, right. I feel like I'm just cheating myself. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Dude, it was awesome. It. Good luck with the tour. I hope you guys fucking have many, many, many more adventures. And uh, it was really awesome meeting you. Yeah, All you right. too, man. Ladies and gentlemen, mwah!